Hello, good evening and welcome to Emerge, our talk show program where we discuss issues that are relevant to um, our lives in various ways. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 60 verse number 1, it says, Arise and shine for your light has come. When light comes, you must arise and you must shine. You must emerge out of darkness. You must emerge out of obscurity to the place where God has set and ordained for you. This evening, we are glad to be discussing a very important issue, your health and your wealth. How important is your health and how does that affect your wealth? What is the value of your health? And with me this evening is Dr. Joseph Obeng, a board certified internist and uh, certified, he's certified in um, medical weight loss and uh, he's a member of the American Academy of Anti-Aging medicine uh dr obeying please welcome thank you all right um let's move on and talk about the second marker yes of our health the yes. second marker of our health having to do with our physical well-being well -being. yes yeah so um the, so the physical well-being just refers to we being able to move mm -hmm. and i was i was trying to look at the bible to see if there's any paths where god moved mm -hmm. and in Genesis in Genesis 1, okay. it was saying that in the beginning, uh, God created heaven and earth. The earth was without form and void. And the, um, there was darkness over the surface, surface okay. of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved. Okay. And I also saw another example of God moving in Genesis. Mm -hmm. That was in Genesis, I think, 3, uh, Genesis 3, Genesis 3, 8. Mm -hmm. I don't think I had that one there. Mm -hmm. Where it said of after... Eve, uh, Adam and Eve had eaten the tree, uh, the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. They were naked, but they said they heard the voice of God moving, moving in, the garden, in the garden in the, in the cool of the day. Okay. The amplifier was saying that they heard the sound of God moving, moving. in the garden mm -hmm. in the cool of the day. Okay. So I think God moved. God moves. <laughs> God moves. <laughs> God is a mover. <laughs> He's a mover. <laughs> so so um, movement is good. And okay. then if you look if you look at our bodies, right? Everything moves. Your heart is pumping blood. Okay. Your lungs are moving in and out, out. to get oxygen. Yeah. Um, you're, you're, even at a cellular level, mm -hmm. you've got a lot of molecules moving mm -hmm. around. Okay. Okay? So being sedentary and not moving does not help us. Okay. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, advantages to movement. Okay. So one of the things is if you take people who exercise. So when we talk about movement, we're basically talking about exercise. Activity. Activity, being active. Walking is exercise. Okay. Actually, so some people don't consider walking to be exercise, mm -hmm. but just walking a couple of miles a day is also exercise. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to get on a treadmill and be, be more active, that's also exercise. Well, I walk. <laughs> yes. I've been trying to average about six to seven miles a day walking. I take a prayer walk, and as I'm walking, you can believe it, I'm sweating. You know, it's, yeah, it's I, I didn't think of walking as an exercise, but I've been doing it the past, what, since, since the corona started, almost yes. every day I'm out there on the streets walking and yes. it's, it's such a rich exercise and i would yes. encourage you to you know keep moving be a mover because your god is a mover yes. all right please go ahead Doug. yes <laughs> yeah yeah so so it's it, it's good but and so to to really get into exercise you um if you want to walk that's fine but if you want to get a real exercise routine mm -hmm. i will encourage people to get an exercise prescription from their physician okay because what f fits one person does not fit the other okay. so you have to know what conditions you have mm -hmm. And then what, and get appropriate exercise prescription to mm -hmm. be able to, to move. Mm -hmm. So the recommendation for exercise varies from place to place, depending on where you get your data. But people are thinking about maybe uh, 90 minutes of maybe moderate intensity exercise. Uh, sorry, uh, let me backtrack. 100, 120 minutes of moderate intensity exercise mm -hmm. of 90 minutes of intensive exercise. Okay. And the intensity of the exercise is basically classified by how fast your heart goes. Okay. So the, a simple equation is 220 minus your age is your maximum heart rate, okay? okay? Simply put, 220 minus your age. So if you're able to attain about 60% to 70% of your maximum heart rate, that's moderate intensity exercise. High intensity exercise will be about 80% of maximum heart rate for age. So, so let's do the calculation, 220 minus your age. So your if age. you're 50, 
you take 220 out, out of two, it. 220, okay. that would be about 170. 70. So that's your maximum heart rate. Which is 100%. Age. Yes. Okay. And so then, so 60% um, of that will okay. be about um, 90, 100. Okay. Okay. So that will be, um, so half of the 170 will be about 85. Mm -hmm. So 60% will be about 100. So okay. if you get to about 100 beats per minute, okay. you are at moderate intensity exercise. Okay. And if you get to 80% of it, which will be a 120, mm -hmm. you'll be at, you're at high intensity level of exercise. exercise. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. The Bible is saying that though you are a master of all, if you remain a child, you are not going to be different from a slave. A slave is an individual that is being controlled. The slave doesn't have their own will. They, they don't will to be able to do things. They are under the control of circumstances. And there are many that have fallen victims to various systems of control. Christians that are supposed to be on top, Christians that are supposed to be exercising Kratos, dominion power, dominion might, are being dominated. In the book of Ecclesiastes said, for I have seen an error, an abomination under the sun, that kings are walking as servants, and the servants are rather riding on what? On horses. The solution is in the scripture. An heir, as long as he remains a child, does not differ at all. At all, there's no way that air is going to differ. There's no dimension, there's no attribute in measurement that you can say that the air is different from that of a slave. Although he is a master of all. Look at this too. Key here. Key. But it's under guardians and still and still until the time appointed by the father of writing. He said and he's under tutors, under instructors, he's under governors until the time appointed of the father. So there is a time appointed for you to stay in this discipleship, to be trained, to be equipped, to release and to unleash that power to manifest on the inside of you. First chapter 2 verse 2, it says that as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow their body. If you don't grow as a child of God, you will be dominated. Many have dodged this concept of disciples, they will leap from church to church. They refuse to stay under proper instructions, proper teaching to enable them to grow, to come to that place where God has ordained them for them to be. They will jump, they will skip, they will, they will, they would run and, and not submit themselves to this principle of discipleship. What are the benefits, some of the benefits of, you Exercise. know, talk about uh, inflammation, global reduction, of, and all this. Yes, things, right? yeah. so, so, yeah, so um, <coughs> we can start from our, let's start from our brain. Okay. So, exercise helps reduce stress. Okay. It also helps with um, anxiety and depression. As exercise has been shown to decrease the levels of anxiety and depression mm -hmm. in us. So, there's what we call the happy hormone that's called serotonin. When you exercise, you, put, you make more serotonin. And that, 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 that elevates your mood as well. Okay. So that's, that's there. Uh, exercise also decreases inflammation in our joints. It also helps our joints get more toned up, our muscle gets toned up, mm -hmm. and uh, you also can have stability and gait. Because sometimes as we grow older, we become unstable. Mm -hmm. You hear of people falling and breaking hips and all that. Mm -hmm. If they exercise, they are able to maintain their stability. Mm -hmm. Exercise, when you, once you exercise, your heart also beats. And as your heart's beating, you exercise your heart, it causes, it improves your cardiovascular performance. Okay. It also helps your, um, bring blood pressure down okay. over time. So exercise is shown to relax your blood, blood vessels. That's okay. it. It brings the blood pressure down. Okay. So that you, the emotional component, relaxing your blood pressure, decreasing uh, global inflammation okay. also helps. Exercise has also been shown to help our hormones. Exercise helps us produce what we call endorphins. Endorphins um, help pain. Okay, reduce pain. They reduce pain, and they also make us happy. Okay. Yeah, so okay. that's another advantage of exercise. Okay. 
and then um, your, in the overall scheme of things, it also helps your immunity. Okay. Mm. Yes, as mm. exercise helps our immunity as well. Immunity. Okay. Yes. You talked about it um, improving our cardiovascular function. Yes. I think um, one of the major functions of our cardiovascular systems is to supply blood and nutrients to the various cells. What I have observed yes. is that when I become active, when yes. I'm walking, when I go to the gym, exercising here and there, um, I my brain improves in terms of it, re it, it it's like I, I become less sluggish yes. in my thinking my yes. memory is uh, you know because uh, what is that what what is what is the, the, the what is happening what's there? happening mm -hmm. so they did a, a study on some rats okay there's something called brain de brain derived neurotropic factor okay. bdnf and the levels are increased when people exercise. Okay. So they think there's a connection there as yeah. well. Mm. So and as you exercise, you have more blood going to your brain. Okay. The, more, the more blood that goes to a tissue, the more oxygenation goes to a tissue okay. as well. Mm -hmm. You produce more hormones, more hormones that help the um, brain function. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So that, that, that could explain why you, you're more sharp uh, with, with exercise. Okay. So more oxygen delivered to your cells mm -hmm. and your, uh, your camp. Yeah. Um, how does that also relate to insulin um, management? Um, you know, sometimes some people's body cells are not able to mm -hmm. appropriately respond, you know, to glucose, glucose. to I mean, or sugar in their blood, yes. and, and all that. How does exercise help? Yes. Yeah, so there's something called insulin resistance. Insulin resistance. Okay. Yes. Yes. So it means, so simply put, it, your body's resistant to insulin. Mm -hmm. So you know, normally when we eat a carbohydrate diet our body produces insulin. Okay. Now, when, when you have insulin resistance, your, your body needs more insulin to bring a set amount of carbohydrate down. Okay. Just say for discussion's sake, you, eat, you, you consume 100 grams of glucose, and your body needs 10 units of insulin to process, to, 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 to process the carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. When you have insulin resistance, when you eat 100 grams of glucose or sugar, your body might need 15 to 20 to process the same amount of sugar. sugar. So it means that your body is resistant to the insulin. That's what okay. we mean. So you need okay. more insulin to bring the sugar down. Okay. And that can lead to diabetes. Okay. Okay? So when you exercise, your body becomes more sensitive to the insulin. Okay. So your, it improves your insulin sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So that means your body, your body cells are more sensitive to the insulin. Okay. So instead of needing 20, they might end up needing 15. And as you keep exercising, they need less. less. It's also related to the fact that when you exercise, your the the fat the fat content of your body also goes down. Mm, the obesity Be hormones. Yes, so okay. the obesity hormones are are, are improved, okay. and then as your fat goes down, you also become less insulin resistant. Okay. Yeah. So people okay. who are obese have more insulin, insulin resistance, insulin resistance okay. because the fat makes you insulin resistant. Okay. So okay. exercise will bring the fat down, okay. and exercise by itself would also improve the insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when, when people are diabetic, it's like insulin is circulating in their system and then sugar is also circulating in their system. Yes. So, okay. for, the diabe so for the diabetics, there's, um, they, they, the insulin that it produces is not enough for them. For them and okay. that's why their sugar is high because okay. you need the insulin to bring the sugar down. Mm -hmm. So just to divulge a little bit, you go to type 1s and the type 2 diabetics. The type 1s are the ones who need insulin. Okay. The type 2s their pancreas and them still produces the insulin, mm -hmm. but they take medicines to make their pancreas produce, produce more, more insulin. Okay. So diabetes is basically an insulin deficient state, mm -hmm. and that's why your sugar is high, mm -hmm. and you need either insulin or medications to mm -hmm. bring it down. Okay. okay. Wow. Very insightful. Um, when you talk about salesmen, and yeah. you know, I mean, if they're not active, how, but we're talking about the, all these things. How do these things affect your productivity? You yes. Know, how do these things affect your... Because your productivity here is the measure of your wealth. Definitely. Like so t take it that you're a salesman, mm -hmm. and then you, you are mobi you're obese, you have sleep apnea. So you wake up tired. Mm -hmm. You are feeling increasingly sleepy during the day. So say you're a car salesman, and you have to go to the customer to look around the lot. You're feeling increasingly sleepy. You're going to be sluggish. You might pass on the customer to another person. Okay. That's lost commission for you. Okay. If you're, you're morbidly obese and you have arthritis in your legs mm -hmm. and you, in your knees and your hips, you can't walk around. 
or if you, are, you even have to drive around to see clients and you have arthritis all over, mm -hmm. the pain will prevent you from being able to make as many stops as you want. That goes against, that, that, that will affect how much commission you're gonna make. So it's, it's an illness pulling you back okay. and then preventing you from being productive okay. to be able to get to your goal. Maximize your work. Good, good. Some people would say that, well, if my knee is hurting, I just can go in for a knee replacement surgery and all that. I mean, can you, I mean, I want you to just put a figure on the figure, assessment. Figure, like yeah. Aspect like that, yeah. So now um, knee replacements, knee replacement can cost, depending on where you do your surgery mm -hmm. and your insurance um, that you need, can cost as much as about $100,000. Mm. Okay. It can cost about $100,000. But these figures are relative. It okay. depends on the hospital that you're doing at, mm -hmm. your insurance and your comorbidities. So anywhere people, anywhere between fifty and $100,000, mm -hmm. there's a, there's a um, um, if you go on the internet and you go through various health um, websites, you can have various varying figures. But new replacement can cost money. Mm -hmm. People who have spine surgeries, cervical spine surgeries and back surgeries can also spend between Twenty thousand dollars and forty uh, between twelve and twenty thousand dollars for cervical spine surgeries, and up to forty thousand dollars for low back surgeries. But the figures, the figures are relative, and it's, okay. it sometimes varies depending on the state mm -hmm. and depending on the insurance plan and which hospital that you're doing it at. When it comes to transformation, the transformative work that needs to take place, it takes place, when it comes to manifestation and releasing of power, it takes place in the renewing of our mind. When we renew our mind, let's look at Romans 12 verse 1. Therefore, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He's saying, I'm, I beseech you to present yourself as sacrifice. It takes sacrifice to be discipled. God will be an unjust God. If someone spends time reading scriptures and meditating upon the scriptures, and then God comes and we see the manifestation, the same manifestation of God's grace in the individual who has read scriptures in the same way as the individual who has not read scriptures. What then is the price of, uh, of hard work? Someone says sacrifice. It requires you to set your alarm clock and wake up at 5. If we are praying at 5.30, so that you can prepare yourself and pray and get yourself in the mood and join the prayer system, it takes sacrifice. I beseech you, brethren, by the message of present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse number 2. And be ye not conformed to this world. And do not be conformed to this world. To be conformed to this world is that you are running your life on the systems of this world. You are operating, you have allowed the world to dictate for you. You are operating as if the world system is the way you are supposed to go. Don't allow the world system to change you. Don't fit into the world system. Don't fit into the mold of the world system. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed, be changed by the renewing of your mind. Experience the power of God by the renewing of your mind. Let there be manifestation of the miraculous hand of God, the miraculous workings of God by the renewing of your mind. He said, when you do so, you may prove that indeed you are a lion. You may prove that indeed you can roar. You may prove that indeed that you can tear any animal apart. You may prove that you have Kratos, dominion power. You may prove, you may prove something. There's something that you need to prove. You may prove what is that good, number one. What is that acceptable, number two. What is that perfect will of God. These are gradations or graduation. The good will of God, the acceptable will of God, and the perfect will. This is the love of God perfected in us. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. As he is, so are we. So we may prove what is the perfect will of God. insightful um so we've talked about the two of the markets for health yeah um you talked about the nutritional and, and then we talked about the physical yes um can you marry the two in terms of balancing the two because sometimes some people would say that i'm going to be just dieting and use my nutrition to lose weight and somebody saying okay i'm going to just exercise and and lose weight but i think that if we can put the two together 
we can maximize our results. Definitely. Okay. So, so it's, it's you, you, you want to do both because then is it's, it's, it's threefold. To, to, to tell, possibly lose weight is threefold. Mm -hmm. It what, is what goes into you. What goes mm -hmm. into you. What goes into you, which is your nutrition. Mm -hmm. The, the calories you burn. The calories you burn. Which okay. is the exercise. Exercise. But the middle part is what we forget most of the time, your metabolism. Your metabolism. Okay. How, how, how effective are you uh, metabolizing? How effective are the chemical reactions in you to okay. be able to expend the energy? Okay. okay. So we usually focus on what goes in, which is our nutrition, mm -hmm. then the energy expenditure. But then the middle part is what people forget. Okay. But how, how to make our body function at an optimal level. Okay. So you actually need both. You can, if you want, you want to diet, that's fine. Uh, but make diet in a lifestyle, not just an eating habit. Okay. If you make diet in a lifestyle, you are able to eat healthier for a long time. Mm -hmm. But if you make dieting like nine day wonder mm -hmm. or a one month wonder, mm -hmm. you're going to go back to your old ways. Okay. So you need a renewal of mind with respect okay. to that, where you want to um, make diet in a lifestyle okay. and then also exercise. So it, it kind of ma comes together. Okay. And then also do things to improve your metabolism, mm -hmm. which we can go to later. Okay. You know, the Bible says that um, we should renew our mind. We should not be conformed to the systems of this world, but That's we should it. have a mind renewal. Yes. Um, when I started the walk, um, it was this determination in me that I'm not going to quit. Um, yes. there is, I had a goal. This is what I want to do, and this is the, the weight I want to maintain. And yeah. you know, on a consistent, there are times that you feel discouraged. You feel like, you know, you don't want to go, but uh, because of that determination, yes. you're able to hit it and you know, basically keep going. Now, there are those who would also say that their biology, their anatomy, their physiology, yeah. and their genetics is different, even when they drink water. They are gaining weight. Yes, <laughs> you know, and yeah. and some of them have resigned to their fate that this is what is going to be, and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, what would you want to say to them? Yeah. <coughs> so, like you said, I mean, we not everyone is different. So those people, it, it possibly could be due to a couple of factors. Okay. It could possibly be due to the way they, they, their body handles the food. Okay. Okay. So they've done it's they've done studies in which they realize mm -hmm. that. Our gut microbes. Okay. So in our in our gut, from um, a small bowel to a large bowel, we have microbes that live there. Animals. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so well, animals well, are living in us. Yes, yeah, small tiny our animals. If you call it here, so we call microbes. Okay. <laughs> microbes. Yes. All right. <laughs> so the gut microbes are there, and these gut microbes, we are just beginning to peel, find out what they actually do. Do. Okay. They have a big impact in terms of influencing our weight. Okay. So we're not talking about a gut brain connection. Mm. These gut microbes can even affect the way you feel. Mm. They can affect the way you absorb nutrients from your diet. So people when you take a person and the person says, I eat a little bit and I gain weight, you, you want to check their metabolism. You want to check their thyroid function, check their adrenals, see how well they are processing food. Okay? Mm -hmm. And also see look at the health of their gut microbes. Some people also have what we call a leaky gut which is a whole different topic, okay. which can cause them to gain weight. So you would want to talk to a doctor and have the doctor examine you and look at which parts of your system are causing you to not be able to lose weight. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So your metabolism is, is important. Now, what about a time of exercise? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, you, when, I when I exercise in the morning, some say I would want to exercise in the evening. Some would say I would want to exercise in the afternoon. D do these times have any impact upon the outcome that we are able to generate? It generates. And then also times of eating. Yes. And if you can talk about fasting, you know, yes. because uh, we want to combine the spiritual component to it, the benefits of all that, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, so when it comes to exercise, we, we all live such different lifestyles. Okay. So the main thing is having a goal of the number of minutes you want to spend in the intensity. Okay. Okay. So if you, if you're somebody who leaves home in the morning and comes back in the evening, I'll rather you exercise in the morning mm -hmm. before you get into the shower. Okay. Do some, do something. If it's 10 minutes a day, that's fine. That's all you can do. You can also get an exercise app 
You can have a treadmill. You can walk around the neighborhood, do something, take a shower, and then go to work. Because when you come back from work, you're tired and it's difficult to exercise. Someone who works at night and does a night shift might also want to exercise in the evening before they go to work. So I always will time it. Time the exercise before you leave the house or before you get your shower. So you get your exercise, you get your shower, and then you leave the house. That way it becomes part of your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I wouldn't place it at a particular time of the day, but you have to use the time of the day that suits you the most. Yes. And then, so that's the, that's the time of the exercise. Then you also have to look at the intensity of the exercise, about how much you're going to do as well. Um, and then um, you wanted to talk about the um, fasting. Right, and the times of eating. The know, times right, of eating, right. okay. So usually, I want to look at, um, I call it an energy pyramid, mm -hmm. where you're looking at making breakfast your main meal of the day, okay. lunch, will be somewhere in the, in middle, the middle and the evening you eat the least okay okay because what happens is some of us have like an inverted pyramid where we mm. eat a little breakfast or nothing at all nothing at all eat some lunch and then we get home we load it we load it we are watching tv <laughs> we're gone so all all that energy that you just calories that you just loaded, gen you loaded on just sitting is just sitting there you haven't had time to move around to ban it okay and then you sleep so you, you're going to end up gaining weight that way. So you have an inverted pyramid. So the pyramids, you have a bigger base okay. where you have the, more of the calories at in breakfast the mm -hmm. in the morning, preferably something that has, that has protein in it. Okay. And then less in the afternoon and the evening you eat light. Why, why have protein in it? Yeah, because protein makes you less hungry. Okay. And so you, 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 and you, and with, each, and when each, with each meal, you want to have some protein with it okay. because there's... When you eat only carbohydrates, your sugar spike is higher. Okay. If you have protein with it, your sugars don't spike as much. Okay. And then we are talking about insulin because once sugar gets into your body, your body produces a lot of insulin. Insulin, okay. insulin is um, anabolic, meaning it, um, it, it builds. Mm -hmm. So too much insulin can also cause you to have belly fat. Okay. 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 Yes, yeah, so it, it builds. It, it, it builds up stuff. So. That's what, why most of these dieting regimens want you to eat less carbs so you produce less insulin. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Yes. So if you eat protein with your insulin, your, uh, sorry, with your, you, your protein with your carbohydrates, you have less insulin production, production because your sugar spikes are controlled, controlled okay. and not as high. So protein is a natural way of controlling your appetite and your insulin production. Yeah, your, sh okay. your sugar. Exactly. Your sugar. Yeah. Your what sugar spikes in the blood. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about fasting? Because I mean, we just finished forty days of fasting, and um, I mean, when I looked at myself, <laughs> you <laughs> were, yeah, yes. I could see it by even my face. Was, yes. Was, was all, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, got to reduce and then. You know, uh, just F fasting yeah. is wonderful. Okay. There's there's a lot of advantages of fasting. Some uh -huh. we can even do what they call intermittent fasting. Okay. Um, so there's various regimens for intermittent fasting. The regimen that I like the most is selecting an eight hour period of the day that you eat. Mm -hmm. So you eat from, say you only do between eight and four o'clock or 10 and six o'clock, mm -hmm. and that's when you eat. And the rest of the 16 hours you don't eat. You don't eat. Okay. And there's a lot of advantages of, of the intermittent fasting. Okay. People, and fasting per se, because it helps you detox. Okay. Because when you fast, mm -hmm. there are certain things that you normally would eat that you don't eat. Okay. So all that, uh, we'll get to the environmental part where we talk about the toxins in the food, but okay. you are without these. Okay. And your body, you, uh, because you have less carbohydrates going in, mm -hmm. your body can uses your fat for energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, that's why you lose weight when you fast. Okay. Because your body, and because you don't have a, a lot of food going in, mm -hmm. your body switches and starts using your fat for energy. Scavenging the, the fat cells. And fat cells, yes. Eating them up. That's <laughs> okay. it. That's right. it. Because, because basically, fat happens when your, your body stores, ex stores excess energy as fat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in times of, quote, unquote, when you are fasting, your body is naturally being stressed and starved to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. So your body switches and says, I'm not getting the food from the outside, need. Car carbohydrates and other things that I need. I'm going to use my fat stores. Okay. So your body starts using your fat That's stores okay. for, for energy. Okay. Yes. And then um, when people fast, they also has been shown to increase the amount of what we call natural killer cells. Natural Fasting killer cells. improves your immune system. Okay. 
okay? Mm. Yes, you improve your immune system. Mm -hmm. You make more natural killer cells. Mm. And then if the fasting also, when you fast, you also obviously get closer to God mm. and all the benefits of fasting yeah. that yeah. Can come from, yes. Isaiah 58, I think verse number six, seven, eight there talks about fasting and it says that your health will spring up speedily. When Amen. you fast, your health will spring up speedily. Yes. Wow, awesome, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, these are the two markers of our health that we've talked about. And I think for tonight, we would want to end here. I um, want to thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Obey, for coming to be a part of this and, and sharing your depth of wisdom. You're very much deep in these uh, things, and we really appreciate your coming. All right, people, God bless you so very much for listening into Image and touching on our health and our wealth. Very, very very resourceful uh, content and i want to encourage you to uh, go back and watch and share the content with your family with your friends uh, you don't know this could save your life and it could help you even during this moment uh, during the season of COVID, we have heard stories of people having um pre i mean conditions that makes them susceptible or makes the impact of COVID on their bodies and their lives um more how do i put it the impact is stronger and higher and you know ended up killing them so if we can help reverse some of these conditions in our lives with the practical approaches that dr obing has been talking about i think it will go a long way look god loves you god wants you to hang around and live for long he wants you long life is our heritage but the body that god has given unto us he expects us we take good care of that body by eating right moving and exercising making sure that we are sweating in our body engaging in some physical activities that will go a long way to help us so we'll come your way once again next week this is pastor martinson signing off on image god bless you mm -hmm.